Okay, the, the power cord here hanging out of the, the Solvi locks is a, a typical 110 volt uh, cord, three prong that you can just plug directly into a socket. Um, if your tank is in an area of the house that you don't have a socket available, uh, you're going to have to have an electrician come in and run wires to it. That's something to think about in your planning stages of the uh, of putting in your Solvi locks. Uh, going across the bottom of the Solvi locks here, so you have your power cord, then you're going to move on to your sensors. There are three sensors that, uh, that can be linked to the differential control here. Uh, the first one, starting from the left, is going to be your collector sensor. This is wire that's going to be running to the roof, so you're measuring the temperature in the hottest part of your system, the collectors. The, uh, the second sensor over is going to be your tank sensor, which is measuring the temperature at the bottom of your tank, uh, the part of the tank that is not going to be heated by an, an element. The, the third sensor is an optional third sensor that is going to be uh, really for the benefit of your knowledge. And uh, so many clients are interested in how hot their tank can get uh, based on the sun on a tank that doesn't have electric backup turned on. The tank is not plugged in for electric backup. Uh, you can measure the top of the tank and you know just how hot the sun is getting the tank. Okay, so we review the ports again that are up here. Okay, so when you first buy the tank, you're going to have your cold in your hot out, and then this is just a plugged port. Uh, this is your sacrificial anode that any tank's going to have that protects the tank from deterioration. Uh, once you put the Solvilox in, this is now your hot in from your Solvilox. So it's coming back from your heat exchanger and going into your tank. This port is now going to be your hot out to the house. Okay. And uh, the only reason behind that is the, the flange that's available. In, the, in this port, the original hot out holds the solar dip tube. Right. This port does not, the dip tube will drop straight in. Okay, so the plumber just pops this guy out and then... Yeah, so if you wheel this into the house, a plumber, uh -huh. all they're doing, cold in, hot out. Right. Don't do anything else, which uh -huh. makes things much more simple for Right. What, what about a, a um, anti-scalding device? Would, would that be something that's required or recommended? Uh, I think it's required by house code, right? Required. Uh, so the, the on-off switch is on mm -hmm. the back side right here. Okay. And so one click up is auto, mm -hmm. which is what you want to leave it on when you walk away okay. from this thing. Uh, and to test it out, you can hear that the pumps are running. Mm -hmm. and that doesn't hurt the pumps to be running with, I mean, you probably don't want to Not for a off. second or two. Yeah. yeah. You, you want to, you can do that to, to check it out, make sure they mm -hmm. are running, but mm -hmm. definitely don't leave them running. Um, so, uh, we're getting a reading. You see you've got the, the T2 is at the bottom of the tank. I don't know how clear that's coming through in the camera, but you've got T2 is the bottom of the tank, and so that's reading down here. And you can click the button, and now you got T1. And now, so you've got a sensor there and a sensor there. They should be reading approximately the same thing. That's mm -hmm. on the floor. It might be a little different. So I'm going to drop it into a, a cup of hot water. Okay. And we're climbing. And if that water's hot enough, if it hits a 16 degree differential, mm -hmm. which it just did, uh -huh. you heard the pumps turn on. Right. So right. that means it's working. Now, now it's going to keep running until it drops back down to an 8 degree differential. Mm -hmm. As you're going across the front here, mm -hmm. this is a guide right. that uh, that you can, you can use with your when you're putting one of these in. So as we've done here, you've got your two storage and from storage, and uh, so that's pretty obvious which one's going where. And uh, so on the storage side, it's going to be this is going to be your cold, and this is going to be your hot. Now on this side. It's going to your heat source and from your heat source. On a drain back system, which this is a drain back system, your drain back tank is going to be on the from your heat source side. So it's going to be dropping out of your drain back tank and coming into your heat exchanger, your cylinder locks here, this direction. 
the way that I, I visualize it is both sides are going to be moving clockwise. Mm -hmm. in a clockwise rotation. So both sides are going like this. So, that's... so a, a drain back system, you're going to have the panels slightly cocked mm -hmm. this right. direction. Right. Um, if you're feeding, you're going from, from your heat exchanger to the inlet here. And then it's going to come out of the high side mm -hmm. and come back down to your drain back tank and then back in right. to your system here. So, I mean, it's not this dramatically cocked, but yeah. you get the idea. Mm -hmm. So, your high point is going to be the uh, one that your goes outlet to of your clay. Okay. The, the main thing that I want to show is the two ports here. If you, if you drop your dip tube in this port, mm -hmm. All of a sudden, you're, you're uh, returning air that's being pushed out of your collectors in a drain back system. It's going to push the air, it's going to shoot it down this dip tube, and then it's going to pull it straight back out. So all of a sudden, you're, you're recirculating air through your system, uh -huh. which can get bound up in your pump, and all of a sudden, the system doesn't work at all. So that guy's got to go in the other one? Exactly. So you want to make sure that it's on this set. They're uh -huh. actually labeled, but it's kind of light in cutler. And if you're doing this in a in a crawl space, you might not see these, right? Which I believe is what happened with uh, the guy that was having the problem. Oh. And uh, and this, just just for your for your knowledge, these uh these dip tubes, mm -hmm. they have this flange. Mm -hmm. There's not a flange catch in here. Ah, so. so if you try to drop this in, you got to be quick because <laughs> it's going in there. <laughs> So this is a little bit different than that one. Mm -hmm. Just that you have to put your your dielectric nipple on there first. Okay. Drop it in there just so it stays put. But the reason why this is here is that if your pumps have been turned off for a year on say a a uh for long vacation or something or um well these pumps are used for many different things other than solar. Mm -hmm. and solar is going to be working year round. Mm -hmm. Something like a radiant floor mm -hmm. or just radiant heat in general. Okay. Uh, they're going to be shut down for, I mean, this area, nine months out of the year, you know. Yeah. So your pump can, can bind up. Mm -hmm. So you can pull this, this plug, the screw looking thing on the front here, pull that off. And if you look inside, there's another slot. And you can, you can manually turn the, pump. turn the pump over so it'll just jar it loose. Mm -hmm. Junk is mm -hmm. gathered in there while it was closed. Now the reason I'm, I'm showing this is occasionally we have people saying my pump has failed mm -hmm. on here. Easiest way to diagnose that. Um, well, there's the there's always the oh it's humming. Mm -hmm. <laughs> there's that test. But everything in here is put together, so one pump might be shaking the whole unit. Mm -hmm. So one pump might be going, the other might not. Mm -hmm. So by pulling out, pulling out that screw thing. Can, you can look in through this hole, and I'm not sure if you're going to oh, yeah. catch that on camera the lighting's not great, but you can see it spinning. Right. Hey, I'm Chris Allen with RTP Solar, and I wanted to show the finished product here. And you can see the uh, various components that we've got. We have the drain back tank. We mounted a little off to the side from the hot water tank so that we'd have plenty of room to run the pipes over here. And we used strut and rod assembly in order to do that. It was a pretty easy way to do it, so it's just hanging off of the rafters. It's good and strong. And uh, we're joined now by Mike Edmiston. <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> hey, Mike. How's it going? Good, good. What do you think? think? Yeah, it, it's, we, we couldn't be happier. I, 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 I tell you, the temperature is, you know, at uh, point of use is now 119 degrees, which is exactly what we wanted it after only a day, less than a day of uh, of sun on the panels, right? And look, here, there's there's not even any uh, yeah, not even any electricity at all going into it. So, yeah, you know, we're getting uh, what'd you say, 100 and, 100 and 119 100 degrees, 19, yeah, without degrees. even trying hard. Yeah, 